The incident you're about to see took place in the past year involving a Laurel driver. By showing you this incident and reminding you of what should have happened, we hope to help stop this type of incident occurring as much in the future. It took place during temporary block working. Although the real incident took place at dusk in the winter, driver Barrens believes it could have happened to him at any time. This is his story. On the 2nd of January, I was coming to work on a late shift. I was driving the gospel oak to Barking Line. But little did I know what that day had in store for me. It was the kind of day no driver really likes, but as we know, it happens from time to time. On my first journey, I was terminated early. I did a shunt I hadn't done before. That was fine. We had power failures, we were passing signals at danger, and the service was disrupted. My second journey was similar. I got closer to Barking, but again, I was turned early. Another shunt that I hadn't done before, and back we came. I then had my break, and my third journey was about to be cancelled due to more power failures and confusion on the service. At the last minute, they decided I would go early, so off I went. Again, signals had to be passed at danger, and the service was delayed. We then had a temporary block working brought in due to more signal failures. We drew up to the man with the red hand lamp at Sierra 27. Hello driver, have you got a net code for me please? Oh, yeah. He gave me the ticket, explained I'd be passing that signal at danger, the next two, and handed my ticket back at Lima 907, somewhere was at Woodgrange Park. I read the instructions back, took the ticket and proceeded on my journey. <laughs> It was very dark on this evening, and the signals that we passed were blank. We proceeded past the two signals, and then when we left Wanstead Park, we came around the corner and I saw the red signal. Rather unusual as it may sound, but we were passing a lot of signals at danger that day. There was nobody present with a red hand lamp, and as I passed it, sounding my horn, assuming that we were stopping at Woodgrange Park, as I've been told. I saw a man shuffling around by the post and the hand lamp was actually on the SPT. had a bad feeling at this point and no detonator had gone off either which was another alarm signal for me. When we pulled into Woodgrange Park I didn't see anybody as I was expecting. So I spoke to the guard and said you have to wait a minute while I called the signaller. So at this point I realised I had made a mistake and the misunderstanding had been where to stop. South Tottenham signal speaking. I'd spatted the signal and now had to wait for the ticket to be collected. While I waited and obviously not feeling too good about this situation the p man came up to me and told me that he picked the detonator up because I knew he knew I wasn't going to stop. I didn't really take this on board at the time because obviously I was in some slight shock. Obviously he hadn't laid the protection. Whilst waiting for the guy to come and collect the ticket from me, I had time to reflect on how could I have made this mistake. We were all taught and trained how to operate in these circumstances. And I think the kind of day it had been, lots of changes within the, the system, passing the signals at danger, stepping up to the jobs, and the kind of misunderstanding in um, the way we talk about where signals are positioned. So, let's look at what went wrong here and make sure none of us fall into this trap again. The primary cause is easy enough to identify. The driver failed to locate and stop at the exit signal, Lima 907. He was told to stop at this signal, the end of temporary block working, and to return the ticket to the hand signaller there. So where did the confusion set in? It began when the hand signaller at the entrance signal, Sierra 27, told him that he would need to override the TPWS when passing Lima 907. This was too much information, too soon, and it set up a doubt about where the ticket should be given up. 
This confusion was greatly increased by the actions of the hand signaller at Lima 907. There should have been a detonator on the railhead and the hand signaller should have been unambiguously displaying a red danger signal. Instead, he had inexplicably removed the detonator and had placed his Bardic hand lamp on top of the SPT box with the red light at right angles to the approaching train while he stood back virtually hidden from view. Bearing in mind the relative inexperience of the driver, these additional omissions and mistakes were contributory factors to the resulting incident. The removal of the detonator did not contribute to the SPAD, but it would have served as a warning to the driver, who would have then not continued into the platform. As a driver, when you are instructed that temporary block working is in force, you must have a clear understanding of the extent of the temporary block and the location of the exit signal. Listen carefully to the instructions you are given. Make sure that you know precisely what intermediate signals are to be passed at danger. Mark them off on the TBW ticket when you pass them as a reminder as to where you are within the block. Ensure you know precisely where you have to stop and give up the ticket. As a hand signaller at the entrance signal, you should give the driver only those instructions that apply to the temporary block working, and these should be given clearly and unambiguously. It was both confusing and unnecessary to tell our driver to override the TPWS at the exit signal. As the hand signaller at the exit signal, you must place and maintain the detonator on the rail until after the approaching train has stopped and the ticket has been given up. You must also stand adjacent to the signal and clearly display a hand danger signal until the train has stopped. As ever, if you follow the rules precisely, you won't get into these difficulties. Looking back, I think one of the factors especially when you're a fairly new driver, I was in my first year, it's assuming everybody else is doing their job correctly and a lot of the things you're doing for the first time. And this obviously isn't the case, let's always make sure that you know what you're doing because the other people involved may not. <laughs>